Um, hello and welcome to Self-Sufficient Conversations. I am your host, Natalie, and we will be talking with Angela from Ofsted in this week's episode in our podcast series, where we explore what self, self-sufficiency means to others. I've been following Angela's journey from the beginning. We both moved from Melbourne to Gippsland, Australia around two and a half years ago, and I've had the pleasure of visiting her family farm and seeing her vision grow and evolve. Can you um, speak to us and tell us how your journey to self-sufficiency started? Ooh, all right. Um, well, um, we had three young kids, though, living in Melbourne, and we thought, yeah, it would never happen until, you know, they'd grown up and moved out. Um, but then one day we were driving up to his mum's place in New South Wales and just driving through all the country. Once again, we were just like, oh, we just so want to be out of the city. Um, and so we just got on real estate just to have a browse really not thinking anything of it um and this place popped up in south gippsland and a month later we just bought it (laughs) sold up in melbourne um and here we are so um i hated my job prior um hubby loves his so he still works in melbourne um but it was our dream that i would be home um with the kids um and so since moving here we've just really started diving into growing our own food um, and just learning a few different skills that would help us be self-sustainable enough that I wouldn't have to return to work. Awesome. I love it. Um, when, you were in suburb- <laughs> when you were in suburbia, were you growing there or is it completely a new lifestyle for you? My husband was. Um, ben, he enjoys it. His dad is a bit of a gardener. Um, has worked in nurseries and stuff. Um, so he has a green thumb. I did not. And I was not even really interested. Um, the most I would do is go out and harvest stuff after he had put in all the work <laughs> to grow it. Um, yeah, so for me, it's pretty new, uh, learning how to do everything. But for him, it's just he's just good at everything. So it's, <laughs> it's just always there. <laughs> <laughs> so in suburbia were you growing from the beginning or is it just something that started and evolved no yeah no um so we were in our last house for 11 years and it was probably the last two years um that we'd started a garden before that yeah we just had grass um in fact we ripped out most things that were there. There was a fig tree in the middle of the lawn and we didn't even know what figs were. (laughs) So we ripped that out. (laughs) Um, Yeah, but then it wasn't until we started having kids that, like, people would gift us fruit trees and stuff. So I think that really started it. And then, yeah, I'll be planted, you know, a few tomatoes and zucchinis and stuff and they took off. Um, Yeah, so it was really only the last two years. Nice. And how big is your land there in South Gippsland? Uh, we're on 10 acres here. Nice. Um, so most of that is now, you know, paddocks for the sheep. Um, but we've got about an acre and a half to two acres um, that the house is on and that's where we're growing our food. Yeah. Um, and in that couple of acres, you've got your fruit trees, food forest kind of in there as well? Yeah. Yeah, nice. Um, do you have plans to extend your growing area or do you think that what you've got is enough to sustain your family? Yeah. Um, for us as pretty new growers, I think we've already spread further than <laughs> we can actually comfortably manage. <laughs> um, so like last season we had like um, our salad bed with like carrots and all that. And now this season it is all just total weeds and we're not even growing food in it this time because we just spread ourselves kind of (laughs) too thin already um but the goal is we've planted out a whole bunch of tea tree out in the paddock Mm. the bees nice um and then yeah mostly just have the sheep out there so the rest of the food can stay near the house where it's easy to to reach (laughs) awesome and when you say a few tea trees she's planted a thousand tea trees out there (laughs) yeah um and then and then we let the sheep in one of the paddocks and i think they ate half oh no (laughs) yeah yeah yeah. 
See, we're very new. We've got no idea what we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. The part, the thing about growing is yeah, that cool. it's a journey. And even if you're 10 years into your journey, like someone like me, I'm still learning every day and there's still yeah. stuff that I stuff up and yeah, it's, <laughs> it's a continual journey and it will never end. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, Good point. <laughs> it is. Um, so you're hoping to get these to, um, I suppose. So we, yeah. So we've got one hive okay, um, nice. that hubby brought home. Um, his workmate had a swarm or whatever yep. it is. <laughs> And brought home a hive. Yeah, so we'll awesome. start with that. So I don't know anything about it, but it's um, really exciting. He's pretty confident. <laughs> yeah, it's very exciting. Yeah, you have beautiful. So our neighbors have, I think, yeah, yeah. Our neighbors have about seven hives, I think. So we've wow. got people right next door that can help us. Yeah. Wow, that's a lot of hives. <laughs> <laughs> I th yeah, I think that's what they said. They they brought one home and then in like a year or two it had split to like seven. Wow. <laughs> I'm a bit scared about that. <laughs> um, I think if you grow, um, and we're still beginner beekeepers as well, but I think if you provide adequate space and if you inspect it and take away any developing queen cells, then you're not going to get the swarms. Um, but it's, it's certainly oh. a, a learning curve there as well. We've had a swar swarm. Yeah. A swarm um, I think about a month after we brought our first hive home. And so we're like, oh my gosh, we think it's, we think it's swarming. And then it was, and then we had to catch it. And I don't think we got the queen and it, yeah, we lost the swarm. And oh no. It was just a huge learning curve um, as with everything else on the farm is. Yep. <laughs> oh, totally. Um, when we visited you on your farm, you had these raised beds that you were growing in. And then I saw on Instagram that you got rid of the raised beds and now you're growing in the ground. Yeah. Can you talk us through that? Yeah. <laughs> hmm. Well, um, we're, we're just trialing stuff. Um, as I said, we're pretty new gardeners, so mm. we don't know what works well. We don't know our land here well enough mm -hmm. um, yet. Um, the raised beds, um, so Hubby works for a wheelchair manufacturing company mm -hmm. and um, they have like metal crates mm -hmm. and they just throw them out. So he was just bringing them home and we were like, oh, what can we use them for? And we thought they'd make great garden beds mm -hmm. and they do. Um, but we have discovered that our soil here is amazing, like mm -hmm. really dark, um, just things just grow well. And we were like, oh, why put in all this effort of building raised beds when we can just throw seed on the ground and it will grow <laughs> pretty blessed um yeah and i don't know it's just more aesthetically pleasing to us mm -hmm. as well um we can do larger beds um it's just simple okay awesome <laughs> yeah <laughs> um and do you use the back to eden method yeah so i don't know if we do it properly but okay our understanding of it is basically just mulch. Um, mm -hmm. I really like when, when you recommended we watch that movie, the Back to Eden film, mm. um, Paul in the movie talked about uh, he had a forest nearby and he could see in the forest that all the leaves just fall and mulch the ground. Mm -hmm. um, and under that was this beautiful, rich soil. And that just made so much sense to us. Mm. So um, we're just using what we've got around here for mulch instead of buying mulch yeah. um, we haven't found anywhere we can get free free mulch um so for us we have 10 acres so we've got a lot of grass mm -hmm. so we just go cut the grass rake it all up um and we've been spreading that as as a mulch and it's working really well um awesome. yeah so we would like in future we'll probably try and find more ways of doing that or mm. easier ways of doing that but yeah for us that's our understanding. Is that what you, yeah. you say the back to Eden method is? Yeah. So, <laughs> so for those that don't know, um, the back to Eden method is um, a method that a farmer um, in, I believe he's in Washington in America, um, yeah. created, devised, I don't know um, how you would explain how he, how he created it, but his name's Paul Gauchy. And basically, um, like Angela said, is he noticed the patterns in the forest and um, felt the need to recreate that in his own garden, a garden that was really dry um, and um, 
with the added organic matter and the mulch he uses wood chips because that's what he can get for free um he noticed that he doesn't have to water his garden anymore and so it's just this um this cycle nutrient cycling um system that he uses and so all the grain waste from the garden will go to the chickens um, he'll put that um that turns into compost he'll put that back on the garden and then top up with wood chips each year and he has beautiful soil and amazing healthy plants and trees <laughs> that's how yeah i would yep. explain it um yeah so that's what we try yeah, so we need to get more into the chicken <laughs> We try and use his method on our farm as well, but we can't get wood chips because we're in the middle of nowhere. Um, every now and then we can get a load and yep. we use that on our paths. Um, but we are basically the same. We use, we use straw instead of um, grass because we're on a very steep block. So it's hard for us to cut and harvest um, the grass. Um, so I do buy it in, but I'm going to um, experiment and because we cut our own hay, I'm going to experiment by putting a bale of hay in the chicken run so they can eat all the seeds um, and then pull out mm. the hay afterwards and then put that on my garden because that's basically a free resource. I know it's organic where the wheat straw that I buy in, um, I can't be certain that's organic. Actually, I can be certain it's not organic. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> and... And we have an organic farm. Um, I don't use any chemicals, so it'd be really, it's really sad that I have to bring in a resource that's probably quite heavily chemically laden. Um, yeah. So that's, that, that's our method of using it. And I think, um, you know, while he promotes wood chips and how amazing they are, um, I think that any sort of mulch, if you're preserving the moisture, you're feeding the microbes and you're building the humus, that's... Yep. Yeah, that's the back to Eden method, really. Um, yeah. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> um, I know that you guys have a scythe. Is that the way you harvest <laughs> your grass for the garden or do you? Not always. Grow? Yeah. So, yeah, so we've got the ride on mower, push mower and the yep. scythe. Yeah. Um, the scythe is fantastic in wet weather because the mowers okay. don't work. Ah, there wet. you go. Well, they do, but it's, it's gross, like, you know, <laughs> grass stuck everywhere. Whereas with the scythe, you can, you can mow, well, I can't see my hand, like quite long grass with yeah. the scythe, just cut it straight at the base, and then you've got really long lengths, which kind of mulches nicer. Mm. Not mulches nicer, but it's easier, easier to spread on the garden bed than all wet, tiny little bits of grass from the mower. Yeah. So, yeah, we use it more in wet weather. Yeah, nice. That's really good to know. <laughs> <laughs> and when we visited you, you had a portable chicken coop, but I believe that's changed to more of an integrated system. Yeah, yeah. We um we found that really hard moving them around. We just had the electric netting. We're trying to move that around. Um the tractor we built was really heavy and just impractical mm. um to move around. So yeah, we and then having watched um Paul's movie mm. and he just has a set chook yard that made so much sense to us like you're building up the soil there in their yard and then you can just shovel it out yeah um that seemed way easier so yeah our um our chicken yard now is like 300 meters squared so wow <laughs> we've got heaps of room for the chickens yeah so um obviously it might take a little while to build up that amount of soil but plenty of space for them they can basically free range in there like yeah. you know it, yeah it's not like they're trapped that's right yeah we um we've had issues with foxes at the moment so we've had either a fox or a hawk come take one a day and then um a week ago oh, we no. had a fox come and take nine so we've only got a few chickens left <clears throat> and they were free ranging oh, gosh. but we just can't do that um, yeah we can't keep losing our animals to whatever no um pests that we have here there are a few i mean we've got dogs we've got wild cats yep. um foxes hawks eagles um i think that's all <laughs> sounds like you need some emus now ah oh, yes <laughs> emu <laughs> i'm really terrified of emus <laughs> i i am positive our emus keep most of our predators away wow we don't seem to have fox issues yeah 
is that a natural thing? Like that's a known thing, like an alpaca? Or I I don't know. I mean, emus are pretty scary. So um, yes. <laughs> they yeah they if there's a small animal around that they don't like, they full like stomp on it and attack that thing. So we that's have really not seen a fox on the property. Yeah, we did lose one lamb to a fox, but they were separated from where the emus were. So that was our fault. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure that they're helping. <laughs> and so do they free range the whole 10 acres or are they in the, their own kind of paddock? Yeah. I think where the garden is, cause they will eat everything. <laughs> <laughs> um, but they free range. Yeah. They free range. Okay, cool. Um, and do you need any special fences to keep them in like deer fences or? Just regular sheep fencing. No, no, we've just got standard sheep fencing. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And you do need a license for those listening. You do need a license, um, a wildlife handler's license, I believe, to um, keep. You in. do, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Apart from the fact that just, they're just terrifying. Just the as if you had a pet lizard. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, we raise them from chicks, so you know they're they're pretty friendly. To do you us. know? <laughs> do you know if they're male or female yet? We have a suspicion we have one of each because their behaviour is a bit different, their sounds are a bit different. Yep. Um, but we actually don't know. Yeah, so we'll just wait and see. <laughs> That's really exciting if you've got one of each. <laughs> oh, we would love chicks. That'd Thank be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and the boys are from the eggs, is that right? Yeah, yeah. Um, I think it's for like seven weeks or something. Wow. Doesn't even get up once. Wow. <laughs> it's crazy, yeah. It is. If only uh, pregnancy was like I think they, um, <laughs> yeah, oh, well, yeah. I think they nest in uh, winter, so could happen this year if, if we've got one of each, yeah. That's so exciting. I look forward to baby chicks fan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, me too. <laughs> um, have you noticed now that you're on the farm growing a whole heap of your own veggies? I mean, Every day I see your harvest baskets and they're very, very bountiful. Um, have you noticed that your cooking and eating habits have changed now that you're um, shopping in your backyard? <laughs> Somewhat. Like, um, I don't think I'd ever had radish before and now we have to eat a lot of radish because <laughs> it grows so well. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, we are trying things we wouldn't have before. I think I've gotten better at just making up a meal um mm -hmm. they don't always work but they mostly work yeah um i still haven't figured out how to get my children to eat food um, <laughs> but yeah um, ben and i are, are pretty happy eating all the veggies so yeah i don't know yeah yes and no yeah we still buy way too much processed stuff but um hopefully in future as we get better at gardening and preserving our food that that will improve yeah yeah do you notice that kids try at least try something from the garden um oh yeah. yeah yeah they'll go pick stuff from the garden and just eat it yeah um i think they just don't like dinner they just don't want to eat at dinner time i think that's yeah. the problem that's the fun stage, but yeah they'll it? go eat out of the garden oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> um yeah i've noticed my kids eat out of the garden um and my oldest he would never eat carrots um, when I was not growing them. And then I started growing them. He's like, these taste so much different. They taste so much better. And so he won't eat shop bought carrots, uh, um, but he'll eat homegrown carrots, which I'm yeah, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. That's really good. Yeah. I noticed that Zara, she'll try lots of things and sometimes things will get spat out and stuff. But um, <laughs> yeah, it's the whole trying, I suppose, the whole trying something. and at least trying it doesn't yeah. make it spat out. Do you have a favorite thing to grow? It's not. Uh, well, now as of this year, it's the boys and berries. Oh, because they were incredible. Oh, my gosh. I don't, I don't know if I've had boys and berry before. And these mm. were just, uh, actually, I think we got our plant from, you said her name earlier, Sam and the, Gardening with them. <laughs> I'm, I'm terrible at names. Terrible names. Anyway, <laughs> they were amazing. They were amazing. Um, the easiest thing to grow for us is radish, wow. unfortunately. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> they're not that great, but you no, know, we're learning not. to love them. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's that's fine. Fan. <laughs> but they ours yeah. Ours are just self seated now. We don't even we don't even try anymore. That's they crazy. just keep coming, which is amazing. Um, and potato. Yeah. How easy is potato? Well, like, if you have nice soil. <laughs> because we do the bacteria and stuff. What's that? If you have nice soil, what yeah. What's that? <laughs> oh, okay. Well, yeah, maybe that's maybe that's the thing. But for <laughs> us, we literally put a potato on top of the dirt, cover it in cut grass and walk away. Mm-hmm. And you don't have to do anything. Whereas um, the other method of like burying it in the soil and then having to keep mounding it, like mm-hmm. we don't do that. Yeah. Um, the mulch just moves up with it. So okay. it's just so easy. So you keep mulching yep. and hilling your potatoes with grass or is it just grass at once? I don't even have to. Wow. Just once. Yeah. Um, so I've tried that this year. Chicken... <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. So I, um, I just put mine on top. I don't know yet. <laughs> um, I just put mine on okay. top and I put some straw on top. Um, and yep. they're starting to flower. So I guess that they will die off soon. Yep. Um, and hopefully yep. I have a few more potatoes than last year. Because <laughs> I like potatoes. Yeah, They're yeah. really hard so to grow. I've yeah. found, oh, you oh, potatoes like my favorite. I just live <laughs> off that. Um, but yeah, we found with with mulching it, um, it just pushes up with the potato. Stays on top, whereas with the soil, it all would fall off. And that's why you have to keep mounding. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, we, we don't really have to do anything. And then when we have put the biggest one straight back in the, the bit you just uncovered where they were growing, just put the biggest one straight back on the soil, we'll cover it up again, we'll walk away. Uh, um, and you'll have more, you know, a few months, however long it takes. Okay, <clears throat> so that's using Paul Gauchy's method. That seems a little familiar. <laughs> yes, yeah. yeah, yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> that's what I haven't done. I haven't um, put my big one back on um, to continue the cycle. So maybe I should just do that this year. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, just keep them going. Do you find that they grow through winter for you? Yes, yeah, they grow all year here. Wow. Um, so we're we're just getting better at it. Like right now, I'm about to have a glut of potatoes because I put them all in at once. Nice. Um, but we we've started the last few harvests. We've started just um, yeah, putting one straight back in. Mm-hmm. Um, so hopefully they'll get staggered eventually. Yeah. Okay. Um. So do you not get frost where you are, or they don't affect your potatoes? Not many. Oh, okay. So we have had them before. Um, the leaves of the potatoes die and we're like, ah, we lost them all, but then they just sprout again later. Okay. Um, so you don't lose your whole crop. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Very well, we interesting. Don't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think it might get a bit frostier where I am. I'm more in the hills and Angela is closer to the sea. Yeah. So she should get yeah. the warmer, warmer air. Oh, um, and we're like, we're like 60 meters above sea level. <laughs> yeah. Wow. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Um, yeah, unfortunately, I get heavy frost, but I I have noticed that sometimes I do get to my uh, sorry potatoes that I've missed because you do that, and they've regrown and they have um, survived, mostly survived um, the winter that we get here. Yeah. So I might just try it and to see if it works because you know it's no huge loss. That's it. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. No, exactly. Yeah. What would be your biggest challenge um, growing your own food out where you are now? Hmm. Um, probably just lack of knowing what we're doing um, and, and being time poor, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, so like we might sow a whole bunch of seeds and then just never get around to transplanting them. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's been there. pretty major. Uh, we don't have a <laughs> greenhouse or anything. Mm-hmm. So uh, sometimes we'll go, we'll actually get transplanted out and then we have a frost um, that we weren't expecting because we don't really 
track any of that or mm -hmm. look at the weather app or <laughs> yeah um so yeah um i had like this monster pumpkin i tried to grow last year and i had a fantastic looking seedling and i went and planted it out and then i actually knew there was a frost expected and i was lazy and didn't go cover it and killed that one oh no so it's more just like yeah laziness <laughs> <laughs> um yeah and just just because we're just learning and we don't um we don't diary anything yeah so <clears throat> we just forget <laughs> yeah i hear you on the the time poorness um both paul and i are here full time and we still struggle with being time poor um and there's been many times that i've sown something and it hasn't gotten into the ground in time and it's either died in the pot because it's thirsty or i fried it in the hot house because i haven't opened it up um yeah or even just not getting to harvest something in time or preserve it in time um, yes it's, it's a bit of a struggle yes. sometimes <laughs> Yeah, most of our um, broccoli's just flowered because we just didn't go cut them off. <laughs> yeah, and it, so it's hard to on eating those. <laughs> it's hard to grow them in a way that you don't just get twenty broccoli's. And I've been really lucky this year that I haven't had twenty yeah. cabbages um, get be ready at <laughs> once because that's a lot of cabbage and I'm struggling. Um, and the cauliflowers are yeah. staggered too, which is awesome. But sometimes the broccoli just all heads up at once and it's like there's only so much broccoli one can eat or give away yeah <laughs> um, yeah and like if you you can blanch them and freeze them but like you've only got yeah. so much freezer space and yeah it's a whole chore <laughs> i'm gonna be honest like last year when i preserved a lot of my veggies i didn't blanch them because it's just another step and another job and then some more time yeah and i yeah. froze all these veggies and I pulled them out to use in winter and they were rubbery because I just froze them fresh and it was just so disappointing and disgusting <laughs> and hard to eat. Yeah. I, I do admit we don't use a lot of our veggies from the freezer. Yeah. So the freezer's kind of full and I never use it. Yeah. I think mine are going to go to the chickens and the compost um, because mine's also full. Yeah. Um, and then I'm just going to start either start again. Um, I probably won't freeze as much. Um, I'll probably blanch my carrots yep. and freeze them because I do use them a lot um, in winter. Um, but I can also store them in the ground, so maybe I just won't bother. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, there was this thing that just the texture wasn't great, <laughs> and so that was a huge learning curve for me. Yeah, but I was just, you know, what's going to happen? I'll just freeze it as it is. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> can always make soup i suppose yeah even it's soup with like chunks of rubber it oh really, really? takes slow cooking oh. for a few hours and it was still rubbery it, yeah oh okay <laughs> Oops. Um, what would be your biggest tip um for someone who wants to start out this journey either in their backyard or on a farm um what would be your biggest tip on how to start to grow their own food yeah um definitely mulch <laughs> um i think that's been the number one helper here so yeah. it doesn't matter it doesn't matter what size garden bed you've got mm. um just put put so if you're direct sowing i think that this is what i would do um maybe moisten the soil a bit put your seeds in uh water it a bit more and then cover it in mulch water it a bit more and then just walk away they'll grow yeah. They should grow um and i think i think paul's method was when he is planting something the direct or transplanting because he's already mulched you know you, you pull it back if the soil's already damp mm -hmm. you don't need to water just chuck it in cover it back up walk away but if the soil's dry make sure you water it okay um i don't know is that a good tip <laughs> I think that's a great tip. I, one of my biggest tips to people is mulching because not only are you conserving water, um, you're providing nutrients for the microbe, like food for the microbes who make the nutrients for your soil. Um, yeah. Yeah, I see so many bare, bare gardens on Instagram. <laughs> just, just mulch. <laughs> yeah. I mean, not all of ours is mulched, um, but mm -hmm. that's because we've, made too big of an area and we can't yeah. keep up <laughs> yeah um so start small 
And yeah, yeah you can grow so much food in such a small area, especially if you're doing the food forest style. Yeah. Just chuck it all in together. Yeah. Um, our <clears> best <throat> beds are ones that are the hodgepodge of everything. Yeah. Agreed. Um, with your beds that are overgrown, um, are you able to sheet mulch that with some cardboard and just put some grass on top of that? Just to rest yeah, it for summer? Yeah, we totally could. Yeah. yeah. I've done that before when I've been... Probably should do something. <laughs> um, yeah. when I, before it self-seeds yeah. and then you've got a seed bank in the soil because the seeds can stay um, in the soil for about seven years and still germinate um, through that time. So... Um, I mean, I've got 750 square metres of veggie patch, so I understand the can't keep up with the weeding. Um, yeah. It certainly happened before. It usually happens in spring when, you know, all that rain comes and you get this beautiful growth. Oh, man. Um, and you're so time poor in spring because you're sowing seeds, um, you're getting everything ready, you're making compost, you're moving compost. Um, and so I've just gotten newspapers. My friends keep me all their newspapers. Um, when they come, they give me their jars and the no, newspapers no. and it's the best gift. Um, and so I just lay news, newspaper on top of the weeds. I don't even weed it. Um, and then I put um, whatever mulch I have on top. Um, if I have compost, I might put some underneath the, um, the newspaper or cardboard. But um, it's, it, it, the weeds feed the soil again. The roots break down inside the soil the grains act as more organic matter on top. And I've always had really good success with just sheet mulching. It's done. I don't have to weed. <laughs> and it's, it's quick. <laughs> yeah. Back in Melbourne, I was totally under this mindset of, I have to go back to work. Not doing great. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm good. <laughs> All right, cool. Um, yeah, I was under this whole mindset of, you know, I had to just go work an office job to help pay the bills and all that. Um, but I've had a major mind shift. Um, it was actually a Bible verse that did that for me. First Thessalonians 5, 16 to 18, if you want to go look it up. Um, but also other Instagrammers like um, Three Rivers Homestead, um, mm -hmm. Jessica, um, it's made me realise that you can, you don't need an income to to help with your finances um mm -hmm. if you're more frugal at home if you are growing your own food preserving it um just making do with what what resources you have already like for mm -hmm. us grass is a major one like most people grow grass go mm -hmm. put it to use you know um just simple things like that can really change help change your lifestyle and just make it simpler um yeah, I don't know. Just go out and do it. Just make yeah. make a start. <laughs> I love that. A cliche, but that's true. <laughs> I think that's really powerful because I've never looked at it that way, um, as in contributing to your family's finances by not working, but working. Yeah, um, in your home, um, and yeah, even just cooking from scratch or um, adding one thing yeah. from the garden into your meal it can be something as simple as herbs because herbs they're expensive. And you often have to buy so many yes. and use so little. Yeah. So even like if you are in an apartment, you know, a couple of pots of herbs, but that can contrib contribute. If you use a lot of herbs, that can contribute to your family um, in so many yeah. great ways. And, and lettuce. Yeah. <gasps> lettuce is actually very simple to grow, takes yeah. up hardly any space. And we discovered here that it, it's more a winter vegetable, mm -hmm. winter crop. Yeah. <laughs> in summer it actually grows year round here yeah um, so it might depend on where you are but that's a major one don't go buy a bag of pre-cut and washed salad leaves you can grow yeah. it easy and for half of them to write in the bag which is something that used to happen for me a lot yeah yes. yeah exactly mm -hmm. um, yeah. <laughs> and it's so quick to grow as well it it doesn't take long for a head of lettuce no that's or, right or for loose leaf lettuce you can get a harvest within three weeks um that's it that's what we do we just peel the outer leaves and it just keeps on giving yeah you don't even need multiple plants um yeah simple stuff like that yeah um i had a question that i didn't touch on before um do you guys uh, make your own compost <clears throat> not really um so we do feed all our food scraps um garden waste to the chickens yeah and then we usually mostly just kind of use that as potting soil 
Yeah. So we will go out. Uh, we've made like a mesh strainer mm -hmm. thing, just um, like Avery wire on a wooden frame. We shovel the soil from the chicken yard into that to just shake it out into a wheelbarrow. Yeah. And then we grow our seeds in that. And then nice. that's, so that's all we're doing at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. And then just uh, mulching with cut grass. Yeah. But in so future, that's making we, once comfort. we've got more of that built up. Yeah. Yeah. Once we've got more of that built up in the chook yard, then we, we'll probably just throw that on the garden beds as well. Awesome. That's really awesome. Yeah. I really enjoyed chatting with you and learning more about your um, yeah. little homestead and how you grow your own food. Yeah, thank you for inviting <laughs> I hope that um, we've encouraged some people that doesn't matter your experience level, you can still grow an abundance of food um, and learn as you go. Um, it's, it's the only way to yeah, learn to how to garden is to do it yourself. Um, <laughs> yeah. You can learn yeah, two so years much. ago, I had zero interest <laughs> in gardening and now I, I'm out there every day. I love it. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Angela. And I'll leave all your links to your social media down below so people can follow along on your journey and continue to be inspired by the work that you're doing. Thanks, Nat. <laughs> no worries. <laughs>